Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. We are live from Karaka Sports Park for today's feature match in the Crown Lift Trucks Fox Championship between Pukekohe and the Aussie Eagles. And speaking of Pukekohe, I'm now joined by head coach and playmaker Jody Henry. Well, Jody, a, a great win last week, 37 to 36. Sounds like a thriller. Uh, talk us through the game from from your point of view. Yeah, well, <clears throat> you know we knew we we're gonna um, come up against a really good side. They're undefeated. Mm. Um, They've been playing really good football. They've, you know, they're doing really well in the Fox Memorial early in the year. It's a bummer that they come down because I, you know, I rate them pretty high. Yep. And um, we knew it was going to be a massive challenge for us coming into the game, and we had to be our best at our best to um, have any chance of winning. So you know, um, in the game we started off really well, got away with a couple of tries in the start, and then um, they got some position, momentum turned, and uh, yeah, they started scoring a few tries and got in front. A result you must take a lot of confidence out, I guess, to, to overcome that and, and come away with the result. I mean, that must do wonders for Team Morale. Yeah, definitely. It was a game we definitely had to win um, to keep our season alive. Yep. And, you know, it was a, it's a massive effort by the boys. You know, being down 30-12 being down, um, half-time, you know, we spoke about it at half-time that we've got 40 minutes to turn it around and, you know, we, we had to come out firing and we did that. I think we come away with three quick tries in the second half put us up, um, I think drew it up, and then we got another quick try, we got in front, and then, yeah, we sealed it at the end with a drop kick from Sonny Walker. And there you go, and of course it does keep you in the race, and uh, you're now in a position where you're right in the thick of that promotion race, probably going to need two wins from the remaining two games, but how do you assess how the campaign's gone so far? Obviously you did really well to get through the qualifiers, um, and how have you made the championship proper? Yeah, like oh, I thought we, we started pretty slow in the um, qualifiers mm. and then when we got into the Fox Championship, you know, our first game was up against Richmond and, you know, they've, they've always been in the Fox, real top team and we had a good go against them. We, we fell short right at the end. They got us right at the end there. Um, but it was a good challenge for us, you know, coming up against some Fox sides that yep. are dropping down um, and we knew it was going to be, every week's going to be a, be a tough game for us and, you know, the boys have stepped up. They've shown that they're capable of... Um, you know, matching these big sides, and it's good. You no know, good experience for a lot of these boys. Never played at their level, and to get a chance to play them has been really good. And you know, hopefully, hopefully we can come away with the win today. It's it's you know, it's it's a do or die for both teams. Yep. Uh, we've got a lot to play for today, and if we can get a good win today, that'll keep our season alive. So, yeah. The format has allowed a club like Pukekohe, who have been down in the lower divisions in, in recent years, to come up and play these big sides. You got to play Papakura a couple of weeks ago, which you know hadn't been done in a long time at first division level. So, what do you make of the format? Do you like it? And, and yeah, what are your impressions of it so far? Yeah, it's it's, it's really great, eh? Like, um, you know, I think of last year where, where we started with the Franklin Storm. Yeah. You know, with the momentum we had from last year, we did really well, and we made a lot of you know a lot of good things last year. And then coming into this year, going on the Pookie been the same thing you know we, we've kept a lot of the core players um, and the new format's great for Auckland Rugby League it gives a lot of these second division teams a chance at you know having a shot in the top there with the top boys yeah. now it would be uh, remiss of us not to mention uh, Mr Pompey who debuted for the Vodafone Warriors a couple of weeks ago um, as a, a local uh, man yourself who's had a fair bit to do with him um, how proud were you to see him run out for the Warriors oh it's awesome you know um to get someone from down here, yep. you know, um, debuting for the Warriors. You know, his younger brother played with us last year yep. for the whole season and he went to rugby this year. And, you know, a lot of potential and it was, it was really good um, to really, you know, to see him out there having, having a go and getting a shot. He really deserves it. All right, just finally, we're going to let you go and uh, get the team ready in a minute. But uh, what's the game plan today? Where do you want to take the Eagles? Um, I think, you know, one thing that we're really improved on is our defense. That's been winning our games. Okay. Um, attack just comes natural to us. You know, when, when we've got the ball, we can attack, you know, really well. As long as our defense is good um, and solid for the whole 80, we'll have a good chance of winning. There you go. All right, well, Jody, thanks very much for joining us and uh, all the best today. Thanks very much, Corey. Cheers. Cheers.
Okay, now with us, TJ Ashford, head coach of the LZ Eagles. Well, TJ, probably a bit of a slow start to the championship proper for you uh, a few weeks before you picked up a victory, but you must be really happy with the way the team's tracking uh, in more recent times. Yeah, the um, the results probably didn't go our way for the first three rounds, but uh, that didn't mean we didn't play good footy. So uh, it was just about you know the boys having belief in, in our systems and you know what they've been doing is correct. So we just had to be playing for probably 80 minutes rather than 79 minutes. So um, look, we've been there or thereabouts, uh, but two back-to-back -back victories now. Hope, hopefully we can get another one today and get our uh, season back on the tracks. The competition is so close, and already there's been two draws in the competition, one involving uh, yourself. Uh, do you sort of feel that the players are sort of growing with each week as they sort of get used to the grinding nature of this comp? Yeah, I, I suppose that's the difference between, you know, Sharman and, and the Fox Championship yep. is it's... Yeah, it's a battle for the 80 minutes. You know, you could probably get away in Sharman with a 20-minute stint, you know, a couple of drop balls back to back. But we've found that here you just have to be switched on throughout the whole 80 minutes. And, you know, there's a lot more strike power in the teams that we're playing at the moment. So uh, boys just have to be, you know, aware of what's happening of their surroundings and be prepared to play for the 80, that's all. Bit of a secret weapon returns for you, Darren Kingy. I think he's stringed a couple of uh, games together. Um, tell us what he brings to, to the game. Uh, experience. So, um, you know, again, he's someone that's played uh, a lot of footy and not, not just, you know, park footy. He's, he's played at high levels. So, um, you know, in games like today, he's going to be very, very good for our, our side. We, we are a very young side. So um, to have Darren on board is, is, you know, something that, you know, it's not really secretive, but he's just come back from injury. So uh, it's good to have him back anyway, man. So, yeah. <laughs> Another one you get back, uh, Glenn Fisiah, who probably hasn't played as much footy as he would have liked this yep. year. But... I mean, what sort of impact is he having on these guys, particularly someone like, I guess, Marcel Connell, um, just yeah. from training with him? Yeah, that's man. It's not just people like Marcel, but, um, you know, Glenn's professional, um, you know, mannerisms and yeah. stuff like that have come through on our side this year. Um, he's helped me drive our, our leadership group along with our, our, our captains, um, both Chance Bunce and, and Isaac as well. So, um, you know, having him around there just, you know, keeps everyone accountable mm -hmm. and, and our standards are kept high throughout the our training sessions. Uh, but he's also brought some of the stuff that he's learnt throughout his, his career as well and brought them back to the club to help us be more of a professional outfit this year. So, um, again, he's someone that you know, we're relishing having him down here back in our Ellerslie Colours and supporting our, his junior club again. So, yeah. For yourself as a coach, I know you've waited a little while for this opportunity, but how are you enjoying, you know, not only life in the qualifiers, but now playing against some big guns, yeah, Papa Quarters and Richmonds? It's, it's, it's been good. Thanks, Troy Hardy, for that one. But, no, nah, mate, it's... um. Yeah, you know, it's, it's everything I thought it would be up here. So um, it's been challenging. I've, I've I've done a fair few years now as a, a reserve grade coach, mm -hmm. so I've been very happy there. Um, but you know, my, my club's been very very supportive, man. So I got to you know say big thank you to my committee and and also our junior junior teams within our club. They have been outstanding for us this year and um, just helped providing a good atmosphere for me as a coach and the boys as a premier team. So it's been good, man. It's been a great great 12 months so far. So. And, and just on that, creating links, I guess, between the senior side of the club and the juniors. I understand um, you've been doing a bit of stuff with the kids on game day, inviting the kids to be part of it. So tell yeah, us a little bit about that. Yeah, we, we try to, man. So I, I remember when I was a young kid, you know, I, I didn't really want to, you know, you didn't aspire to be in the NRA. You wanted to play for your mm -hmm. premier team. So um, that was just about trying to bring that back to our club as well. And uh, we've got a, a really good facility having the big gym downstairs. So, you know, we, we can have upwards between 60 to, to 70 people in our change oh. room after a game you know, singing the team chant and all that sort of stuff. So it's been awesome. You know, the kids know our team song and things like that. And um, just, you know, it's, it's, it's a whole club culture rather than just a premier culture. So um, at the end of the day, without our juniors coming through, we're not going to survive as, as a footy club. So we need to be looking after our young ones just as much as the club looks after our premier team. Yep, well said. And uh, uh, I guess a message that every club sort of needs to be aware of, and I'm sure they are out there and making efforts themselves. All right, to the game now. And uh, the pitch is holding up fairly well. We've got the reserve game going on behind us. Uh, what's the plan today against a fairly sizable Pukekohe pack? Yeah, I, I suppose the playing to the conditions will be the main thing for today. So uh, it's very windy. Uh, although the field's holding up, I've, I've taken a walk out there today. It's quite soft underfoot. So um, yeah, again, we just have to get our spacing right defensively. Um, we've worked on that throughout the week anyway. So um, fingers crossed the boys come out and do their job today. But um, yeah, you know, getting numbers and tackles, sliding down the ruck, all the 1% all the of things when it comes to defence. But um, yeah, we'll try our best to try and get on that uh, for today.
Excellent. All right, huge fortnight coming up for you, TJ. It all starts today, so all the very best, and uh, yeah, good luck for your game and yeah, uh, the you. remainder of the season. No, again, uh, just big thank you, thank you to my family for uh, all the support this year. I know my family's over in Melbourne supporting Uncle Ellen and uh, my cousin Chantel. Um, and also, you know, just a big, big uh, thank you to all our sponsors for our club this year. Without you guys, our club uh, can't survive. So big thank you um, to you guys for your ongoing support. Um, and yeah, go the Eagles. Excellent. All right, we're going to throw it to the field now as we build towards kickoff here in the uh, big clash in the Crown Lift Trucks Fox Championship. And actually, uh, we may actually just bring the chairman uh, straight in as well. So very short break for us before we resume with the build-up. Thanks, man. So welcome back ladies and gentlemen, my name's Troy Hardy with the Auckland Rugby League and uh, very proud and privileged to be able to have the chairperson of the Pukekohe Pythons, Tilly. Must be a special day down here seeing the Pythons out against um, Ellerslie Eagles. Yes it is and it's, um, oh, it, it's uh, I think it's one of these things you actually look forward to in terms of uh, where, where this team is actually um, going forward, so mm. yeah, an opportune time. Yeah. And what and what does it mean to the club? You know, I mean, look, you know, it's fantastic that we're live streaming down here today. The boys have certainly performed very well today, and I know earlier on today we talked about the format, the format okay. of the competition. Give us your thoughts on that. Okay. Um, yeah, I I understand, and well, I believe now there's there's four standing yep. in that that um, I guess in that in that um, middle eight. So, yep. Yeah. So it's an opportunity right now to actually see this this whole format going forward. Mm. And uh, and having the Pythons as part of that format is yeah, yeah. sits way up there. <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot of strong support down here. You know the Pythons have done taken a couple of big matches this season. What's the vibe like in the club? Oh, it's 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 really um, a mana. What do you call it? They call it yeah, mana, yeah, mana yeah. heart. So yeah. it's, it's pretty much that uh, back here in in Pukekohe here. So it sort of has its uh, um, on flow in terms of other areas where they go to. So yeah, they go with their mana. Yeah. And look, um, you know, Pukekohe Pythons, it's not just about um, rugby league. Tell us a bit of, um, you know, the other sports that you've got going on down there as well. Okay, yes, we've got um, softball, um, netball, um, touch rugby and looking at tag. So that's really, um, I guess it's all about keeping the, the numbers yep. and in, in the area. So that's where we're sort of heading towards. Yeah. And if somebody like, you know, um, you've got a women's team, you've got, um, you know, the, the juniors as well as this um, premier side, if somebody was interested in playing, Rugby league. How would they go about getting in contact with you? Oh yes, look, I, I've I've got a yeah a mobile number, and I, I guess we've got a, a website. Yep. Um, and the admin and operation uh, person uh, around that yeah she need to be. Contacted. Do you know what the email is? Uh, you got an email well, for yep, us? I've got an e email for myself. So yeah, that'll do. Let's start. It's um, potinitilly at gmail dot com. Yep. Yep. So yeah, cool. anyone looking for uh, you know a place to uh, I get kicked back and uh, looking at sport as the um, well, I, I think uh, a go-to place for them, yeah. Awesome, a, awesome. A ring, yeah. And, and look, um, you know, with the Pythons doing so well this season, um, all support is really valued, you know. So outside of the volunteers, and I, you got, I know that you've got a lot of strong people that help you at the club, uh, sponsorship. 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 Well, is there an opportunity for sponsors to come on board? There is, there is. And uh, we've not had any this year. Um, uh, not that I know of anyway. And so right. it's... Um, I think it's awesome that there's anybody out there that's wanting to support uh, the Pythons back in the you know, by all means, contact myself. Yeah, and then we'll put it out there. We'll put it out ourselves out there yep. uh, on behalf of the sponsors. Yeah, so just on that, ladies and gentlemen, you know, if you are out there and you're wanting to back a, um, an up-and-coming team, a team that's doing very, very well in the uh, Fox Championship, please get a hold of Tilly through the Facebook. I know that the Pythons have got a Facebook page or their website. Failing that, um, you can get hold of us at the Auckland Rugby League, www.aucklandleague.co.nz, and we'll certainly point you in the right direction. So for today's match... 
strong, strong support coming down here. Um, and what are your thoughts and how do you think they're going to go uh, against Ellerslie? It's, uh, it's going to be a nail biting. Nail uh, biting. Nail biting. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to come down, uh, it's going to go right down to the curtain. Okay, yeah. cool. Well, look, on behalf of the Auckland Rugby League, we want to thank you for hosting us today. We've had an absolute mean feed out here today, so we've certainly been looked after. And um, and as I said, look, on, on behalf of the Auckland Rugby League, congratulations for your success this season and uh, looking forward to today's match. So, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. The chairperson of the Pukeko Pythons down here as we get ready now for the big live clash coming up. Don't go too far away as we get ready for the 2.30 kickoff. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen, or if you're just joining us, welcome to Karaka Sports Park. We are here for the big Crown Lift Trucks Fox Championship clash between the Pukekohe Pythons and the Owsley Eagles. Troy Hardy joins me in commentary now, and Troy, on and off rain throughout the day, and uh, we did have some grave concerns for the pitch, but it's actually holding up pretty well as we get to the back end of the uh, reserve grade game. Yeah, no, uh, good call there, Corey. Um, and saying that, there's probably... A couple of undulating points in the park where there's water gathering, but um, so far so lucky in regards to you know holding up as you rightly said. So a huge clash on the cards today, and we'll get to the ladder in a minute. And this match really, it's it's the biggest clash of the round in terms of uh, implications for the ladder and that push for promotion via the top four. But we'll start by just looking at the Fox Memorial Premiership, the uh, first division sponsored by SAS, and uh, the games on today. We've got the Marist Saints taking on the Mount Albert Lions. The Lions jumping back into the top four with that brilliant victory over Point Chevalier last week. Glenora versus Northcote. 
this will be a huge clash. A win clinches Northcote their playoff spot. If the Glenora Bears lose this one, they possibly drop back out of the top four. Uh, but if they win this one, it causes a ripple effect for the rest of the ladder. <laughs> yeah. uh, a, a, a huge game. Uh, look, um, just following the uh, top four in the SAS Fox Pro Premiership has been an absolute pleasure, you know, over the last four or five weeks. You know, you drop a game next minute, you're sitting at six, and then you pull one back and you're back into the top four. So an absolute knuckle buster, or a white knuckle ride, should say, out there. Probably going to be a knuckle buster as well, just quietly, in regards to those two teams going at it. And um, I dare say there won't be any faint hearts on the field at Newland today. Speaking of uh, huge games, Point Chevalier take on the Howard Hornets. Now, Point Chevalier, with that loss last week, have maybe put themselves into must-win territory. It depends on other results. There's a chance they're still alive next week, depending on what happens. Uh, but that's a huge game against the yeah. team that's only lost two matches all year. Uh, you now put yourself in a position where you're under a fair bit of pressure. Yeah, no, I think um, they are under pressure. It's a must-win game for them. And uh, to be relying on mathematics at this part of the season is probably not the right place to be. So uh, another big day out for not just the Pirates, but for Howick as well as they go down towards, you know, looking at the Rokotai Shield. Mangere East take on Otahu in the other game of the uh, round. And, of course, that will be round six of the SAS Fox Mario Premiership. Last week's results saw uh, Northcote get up and uh, break Otahu Hearts once again, 26 to 24. They were down by a fair bit at one stage there. It may have been as much as 18 points. Uh, so a huge victory for the Northcote Tigers, who were without the Barna brothers. Uh, Eddie Finorta, I think, still out. So a massive victory there for the Tigers, which keeps them in second position. Mount Albert get up again. This was a big comeback, 26 to 18 over Point Chevalier again. They trailed by maybe 18 points or so at, at one stage there. The Glenora Bears did it easy against Maris, 48 to 6. And the Howard Cornets defended the Root Rooster, 50 points to 16. So if we look at uh, that competition, Troy, I know a couple of blowout results there involving Mangari East and Marist, um, but some absolute thrillers in the other two games. And poor old Otahu, deja vu for them as they get run down once again by Northcote. Yeah, like, um, and they were doing, you know, the same thing happened, you know, but as you said, deja vu for that um, first round. Uh, big shout out to Mick Curran and the boys at Mount Albert. I know that the win against Point Chevalier meant a lot to the uh, Lions. And um, just goes to show, you know, that park at Fells Park, what a sprint track that's turned out to be. Just fantastic stuff for SAS Fox Premiership football. OK, let's bring up the ladder now for the SAS Fox Memorial Premiership. And at the top, it is the uh, Howard Hornets, who with a win today, would seal the Urukutai Shield, the minor premiership. A chance to be caught by Northcote, uh, but a fairly slim chance at that. But they are the only team so far that has officially booked their ticket to the playoffs, well done to Coach Sean Clark. A brilliant campaign to only lose two games. And uh, I believe we're out there next week for the uh, live-streamed match as well. So very much yep. looking forward to getting out there and uh, and giving the Hornets some coverage. The Northcote Tigers and Esseldon just behind on 24 points. Got a two-point buffer right now over Mount Albert, but that's very, very close. And uh, Northcote have a huge task today against fourth place Glenora, who sit there on 20 points. They're ahead of Point Chevalier on differential. But as I mentioned, that Glenora result will potentially trigger uh, a real change in the ladder. Otahu, well, they're still in with a hope right now, but it's must-win territory for them. And at the bottom, the uh, Maris Saints and Mangere East Hawks, who probably just haven't got going the way they would have hoped in the uh, championship proper in this. But, of course, uh, two young teams, plenty uh, of positives to look forward to there as well. So uh, that is how things look in the first division. And uh, we'll now turn our attention to the second division as the uh, reserve grade game wraps up behind us. And just on that uh, game trail, we watched a little bit of it before. Some uh, some nice skill on display out there from the uh, reserve grade and uh, particularly Pukekohe looking fairly deep right now. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, you know, an absolute pleasure for me to watch Sam Cauldron run around there in the, uh, the number one jersey playing in the seven position, keeping everybody guessing. But um, outside of that, as you said, there's some good class on uh, footy today and um, the Pythons really knew how to work the back door, didn't they? So looking now at uh, the games that are on today in the Crown Lift Trucks Fox Championship, of course we've got our match here at Karaka Sports Park. The Richmond Bulldogs take on the Hibiscus Coast Raiders. Crucial that Richmond get a win. They face Ellerslie next week in what could basically be a, a do-or-die clash. The winner stays and uh, winner goes, uh, loser goes home. Teatutu vs Bay Roskill. This is wow. an intriguing clash. Yeah. Uh, a bit of a West Auckland derby there. Teatutu come off a loss last week and uh, we streamed that game. And although they went down, they looked pretty impressive for the most part. Yeah, they, um, you know, they were probably scoreline got blown out towards the back end of that match. Um, they had a couple go astray in the first half, which would have you know, made it a wee bit more closer. Not saying that it was a big, big spread, 
but they were definitely in that game and they were right up in the hunt. So expecting big things from Te Arata. Two Roosters up against Bay Roskill today and I, you know, that one there is going to go down to the wire too, I'm sure. Papakota take on uh, Manurewa and what has become a real derby clash and uh, that's the second time we get to see that one this year so that'll be a really good clash and uh, I dare say similar to what we're going to experience here today that'll draw a crowd of, uh, of hundreds uh, yeah. that's certainly a big yeah. clash on the calendar. Oh mate and a big clash in the middles too I don't think anybody's going to be too shy in there so they've got some big units on both sides and with the way that the weather's sort of you know panning out um, they're going to have to keep it tight and you know off each other's hips and I think um, you know the biggest deal will, will certainly be the the ones that will survive. Looking at uh, results from last week in the Crown Lift Trucks Fox Championship and our live stream game was uh, Papakura 28 to Te Aratu 22. A really close game, but in the end, probably Papakura's experience and size in the Ford Pack uh, was the difference. Uh, shout out to Makari Beatty as well, who had a brilliant game at fullback. Richmond got up 34 to 24 over Manurewa and LZ Eagles had a big win, 44 to 12 over the Hibiscus Coast. But the one that I think caught all of our attention, uh, the Pukekohe Pythons 37, Barrow School Vikings 36. Now this caught our attention for a couple of reasons. It's a bit of an upset result to start with, mm, but also mm. Pukekohe were behind by I think 18 or maybe even 20 points at one stage. Um, a huge victory for them and it keeps them alive. Yeah, absolutely. And look, and that was a trigger point. Um, the fact that they, you know, beat one of the big scalps. Well, we're here today. And, um, you know, this is um, a do or die match for both of these two teams trying to fight to get into the top four. And depending on what happens mathematically, you know, it really needs to um, come down today for either of these sides to really set tone and tenor. So let's bring up the ladder now as uh, Troy and I put on our uh, mathematics hats. And uh, I'm not even going to try to go through all of the possible scenarios here because this competition <laughs> is extremely unpredictable. And uh, you just don't know what's going to happen. What we do know is the Papakura Sea Eagles, after disappointing qualifiers, have uh, hit the front and uh, looked very, very impressive last week. I think they are now deserving competition favourites uh, at this stage. Bay Roskill, like I said, face a huge clash against Tiaratu, and uh, the winner of that one probably likely uh, guarantees themselves second position uh, heading into the playoffs. And, of course, the top four automatically secure promotion. Richmond are tucked in just behind on differential. And then we get to Ellerslie and Pukekohe. Now, there is a scenario where either of these two teams could lose today and still remain alive next week. But really, the guts of it is win today and uh, maintain control of your own destiny. Absolutely. And I think as you see them sitting on five points there, that's added pressure for them. You know, So somewhere along the line, they've had a draw and they're one point off the pace You know, with Richmond. And Richmond... Uh, you know, they've got a couple of um, games to go towards the back end, and I think one of them's going to be at home. So, you know, they're always tough to beat there. So, as we rightly said, you know, I think this is the game of the round, and we're going to see some fantastic football today. The Manurewa Marlins, the uh, Shaman Cup runners-up from last year, they sit in seventh position, just the one win so far. And the Hibiscus Coast at the bottom on the one point, and, uh, well, the, the points will tell some sort of story, I guess. Um, I do want to really, I guess, give a shout-out to uh, Bluey McLennan and the job Absolutely. he's done there. Yep. Let's remember, this was a club that was down at the bottom of the uh, second division for Correct. the last couple of years, and, uh, you know, he's got them back up there, Nathan Ash playing great footy in the halves, and uh, he's given them something to be really proud of. Not just that, I think he also, you know, brought a lot of the uh, youth and a lot of um, pride back into the club there, and uh, having a man of that calibre back in grassroots sports is just tremendous. Okay, so let's get rid of the ladder and uh, talk you through how the teams will take the field. There's the Ellerslie Eagles on screen, so we'll bring up the team lists as we get the final call from the referee and uh, the players to watch out for from a Pukakoi point of view. Jody Henry, he's vastly experienced and uh, will really direct the side around. It will, all the play will go through him and you can expect he will command plenty of attention defensively as well from the LZ Eagles who will try and work him over. Jason Toll as well, a, a really solid contributor at dummy half. He'll look to dictate the speed of the ruck. But the one I really like, Ruben Tolavai, yep. uh, played for Auckland this year. Yep. I think he was uh, one of a couple of second division representatives. He was the Shaman Cup player of the year last mm. year and a player that's just gone from strength to strength yep. under uh, Jody Henry. Yeah, and a fantastic young man. And despite what Jody said about him, he's a really <laughs> top bloke. There you go, a bit of a stitch up already from my colleague, of course. Uh, Pukakoi are uh, coached by Jody Henry, who will be a player coach today. Moving to the Ellerslie Eagles and some real excitement machines to watch in this side. Marcel Connell, who spent a little bit of time with the Warriors jersey flag side. He's still a teenager and uh, a real lightning bolt out the back. He's named in the number one jersey, but he'll actually play on the wing. The fullback spot will be reserved for Glenn Fishiahi. What a man to bring back at this level. Of course, a Matema Atonga representative 
vastly experienced at uh, NRL level as well with the Warriors. Of course, scored four tries in a game once for the Warriors down there in Wellington. So they had some real pace to this back line and uh, some real strike that uh, you just won't know what to expect. Chance Bunce will lead them around the park well. And watch for Darren Kingy. I'm looking forward to the clash of the two number nines here. Two experienced number nines. Darren Kingy just brings so much to uh, to this team, particularly in these conditions. I think we want to control the, the speed of play. Yeah, and that's where I think he'll be a different strike weapon. He knows how to, um, you know, speed it up and slow it down, and he's got great footwork and um, and good decision making. So, looking forward to that clash too. So, our referee today is Harley Wall in the middle of the park. He'll be assisted by Jordan Davies and Zane Richardson as the touchies. So, the two teams now break. Not long now until we get underway in one of the biggest games of the year. And what a blessing this uh, new structure has been. There's been brilliant football played every week. And, you know, to some degree, Troy, the live stream games we select sometimes, we're, we're sort of doing it blind a little bit. But really, we've had hardly any blowout results uh, in games that we've streamed this year. And uh, just exciting action that's tended to go down to the last 10 minutes. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, you know, just talking about some of the other games that are going on around Auckland, you know, if you are out and about, it wouldn't matter where you went today. There's some fantastic football on offer. And today, you know, if you are in the Franklin area, please come down and join us at the Crown Lift Trucks Fox Championship. There's going to be an absolute humdinger. If not, if you're at home or you're at the Eagles' nest, big shout-out to the Eagles fans there at the clubhouse. I've been told by the club manager there, if you're the first three to the bar, you might get a free jug. So will be Ellerslie to kick us off. Pukakoi will run it back to the club room end here at Karaka Sports Park. It's been a hive of activity down here today. But here it is, the feature match of the day. Pukakoi with first use of the ball. Such a good story. Came back together as part of the Franklin Storm, really spearheaded by Jody Henry last year. They had a great year, made the playoffs, and then have gone back to playing under the uh, name of Pukakoi. And really picked up where they left off. All right, we've got a penalty early on here, and it's for creeping up inside the 10. So two plays in, and uh, Ellerslie can see the penalty. Henry will put that one over into touch. And Pukakoi now to start this set five metres inside the attacking half. So a nervous start, perhaps, from the Ellerslie Eagles here. And that's a strong carry forward. Lovely work from Tyson oh. Namu. Ball comes loose now, but play on the call for the time being. Bobby Farrow taken to ground. The 25 out from the line now. Tolovai set to the left. He will be the first receiver and then goes back door and links with Tuivai Lopa, former Papakota man. Tol, dummies to the right. Instead goes left. Henry. Toll. Shifts left edge. Henry holds it up. Chiming into the line, but the Ellerslie Eagles scramble beautifully. May have been Fishiahi who came in to make a big play there. It was. Toe clears the ruck. Goes to Henry. Dribbles it in behind. It's a quagmire down there, but it gets cleaned up. And now a penalty as well. That is smart play there from Glenn Fishiahi, who already is covered head to toe in mud. Going to be a long day for Glenn. So, Ellers Legals find themselves with a penalty and getting ready to kick for touch. Big strong support down here today too, Corey. You know, even the babies are down there on the on the sideline. And what little one-year-old wouldn't want to be out here in his wrapped up little pram watching rugby league? So Melissa taps and gets us back into way. It goes through Kingy on the way to a settler. So penalties on the opening sets for both teams and uh, that probably does speak a little bit to just how big this game is and maybe some early nerves. He's a little settler through the middle of the park from uh, Isaac Tamapio. Kingy jumps out, looks to his left. Making good yardage here are the LZ Eagles. They're taking down 10 short of halfway. Tackle still to play with here. Bunts will kick. Goes up over the top. Did that fine grass before it went out? No, it did not. Out on the full. So an error 
on the kick from the Aussie Eagles. And uh, once again, Pukakoi will start the set in attacking territory here. There's a strong breeze out there today, Troy, which is obviously going to make the kicking game pretty difficult. Yeah, it's coming and going. Eh? It's sort of gusting in every, every odd moment. Uh, I'm just so pleased that it's not torrential downpour. You can see a little bit of moisture in the air as the pa they're getting ready to pack in. Ball's fed. Good line speed. They're up quickly, and it's uh, Robert Melesia who sits upon him. He's an Ellerslie junior, but spent some time at Richmond. Called him in the Fox with Richmond. A year or two ago, this is Tolovai taking the ground 40 out from the line. Tuivai Lopa makes 10 on the run. Swinging it out the back now. A little bit of footwork from Kingy. Two Darren Kingies on the park. We'll do our best not to get confused. Bobby Farrow. Last play coming up now. Toll. Tolavai. Back door, Henry dinks a little kick in oh, behind. So. What did he to hold on to that? Wow, brilliant hands from Fishiahi. A horror place to be playing fullback right now. That uh, end goal, which we probably didn't realise until the game kicked off, is uh, thick and mud. But Fishiahi did a brilliant job that time. Now as yells, the Eagles ruck the ball out. There's a run up over the top of Jason Toll. Yeah, big strong run too. He managed to um, get up and play the ball quickly. Eagles still trying to build on the momentum and complete a set. Kingy will kick from the bottom of the ruck. This will be a 40-20 candidate if it's long enough. It's not going to go anywhere near it and will be scooped up by Kingy who brings the ball straight back towards the direction of Fishiahi and involved in that one as well, Taniela Carver. Some of the Python boys just rolling back in to get their shape now. And uh, apologies, the scoreboard appeared to have uh, started the game at 4-0. Uh, That's now been readjusted, so apologies yeah. if you've been sitting at home wondering well, what was going on. It was TJ in the box. <laughs> <laughs> Centre field, now come the Pythons. Tui Vailopa. Strong carry, and he goes centre field in front of the SAS uprights. Options left and right now for Jason Toll. Henry, double pump, goes out the back. They attack down the left-hand side, but they scramble well once again. The LZ Eagles getting there in numbers. Melissia joining in late, and uh, the play will die down there. So six minutes gone. It remains nil-nil here between the Pythons and the Eagles. And great footage there by the CTAS team as we've introduced the third camera down and in goal. And uh, great to have Pete joining the side. And um, great to have these images being streamed live around the world. Brought to you by ARL TV and CTAS, our live stream partners. Connell. Bunce. Shuffles play on to the left-hand side, but uh, the wall of purple are up quickly and contain him 20 metres off his own line. This is a good defensive set so far from Pukakoi. Tolovai going down low. Top may have been uh, the 17, Namu. Kingy gets a little half gap. And a penalty to boot. Clever there from Darren Kingy and a wry smile as well to acknowledge it. So earns his side the penalty, and uh, as it is, they're five short of halfway. This will take them into good attacking territory here and a, a good opportunity, really, for points. For the first time in this match, the kick for touch will go to ground about 25 out from the line. He's certainly chewed off a wee bit of metres here. Well, we've got special guests all over the park today. Chairman of the ARL has joined us, along with Sean... Sean Pearson, our Crown Lift truck man. If we're lucky at halftime, we might even get a song out of him, Corey. Bunce. Centre field via Felice. Oh. And knock on in there. 
so. Plenty of errors to start this one, both uh, penalties and drop balls. And Pukakoi breathe a big sigh of relief there. They get let off the hook. But uh, a nice little battle brewing through the middle of the park already. Just as the scrum's getting ready to be fed, big thank you to Crown Lift Trucks, sponsors of the referees, the Auckland Referees Association there in the middle of the park, along with major sponsors for the Fox Championship. Python's back on the grind. And earn a penalty as well. All tangled up that time was race Tui Vailopa. And big Joseph on the camera there tried to run out and catch the ball. So saved at the sea test box and it gives me much confidence to know that Joseph's there in front of us, Corey. And if Joseph was a footy player, what position do you reckon he'd play? He'd play linesman. And here he is again playing linesman and he's managed to punch that away. Look at That's that. two times. Third time lucky, Jody. Commitment to the cause. All right, Pukakoi. Ready to get back underway. It's taken an age to get to it, but we're into it now. Here's Tui Vailopa. Oh. <laughs> Straight into the waiting Matthew Atuahiva. The other Tui Vailopa. Heck of a one-two punch, those two. Yeah, he's a big, strong boy, isn't he? Tol. Tolovai. Back on the inside. Up over the top, but well contained by the LZ Eagles. They're on a bit of a roll here. Pukakoi looking to generate some momentum. Right side, they attack to Kingy. Walker has taken the ground. Center field, now they work it once again. The LZ line up quickly. Toll. Looping ball over the top, space on the right edge now, and we have our first try. Joshua Tufunga over in the right-hand corner. Ten minutes gone, ten and a half minutes gone, and Pukakoi get their reward. As we get to see the fantastic images from Crown Lift Trucks action replay, we can see it shifting to the right-hand edge here. They knew the numbers was on. Big cutout pass. Beautiful to see. And then just popping the winger in. Had enough space just to squeeze through there and try up on the right-hand edge. Four points on the board. Home team off and running. And I dare say I'll probably be getting a text or a tweet from the bar manager at the Ellerslie Eagles. Yeah, you owe her 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what happens when you said, you know, the first three people to the bar get a jug. Well, that's courtesy of Salwan Pearson, and uh, send that invoice through to him at salwan.p.aucklandleague.co.nz. So, massive crowd building down here. Good to see the uh, chairman of the Auckland Rugby League, Shane Price, down here supporting. Wonderful support from the local community down here. It's uh, wonderful to see Rugby League really has a very strong presence out here. And uh, they're all getting behind the Pythons, and why not? What a great story so far this year, and it's not quite over yet, particularly if they win today. A little bit of gust of wind coming through, and if you can hear, we've got a couple of tarps up outside the commentary box. And uh, you can see that's how windy it is when you need somebody to come down and hold the ball on the tee. So steps in. Oh, big Had a heck of it. a curl on it. Yeah. But score remains, Pukakoi 4, Ellerslie nil. 12 and a half gone here at Karaka Sports Park. So Pukakoi Pythons 
Four points up, the 13 minute mark. As the Ellers Legals get ready for the reset. So Bunts to get us back underway. It's allowed to take a bounce, picked up by Toy Vailoppa and look out, wind him up. Straight back at them, but Kingy leads the charge and does a good job of making first up contact. Joining in as well was Atua Hiva. To. A little bit of deception at dummy half there, comes back to the inside and links up with Tui Vailoppa. Yeah, good defensive line rushing there, weren't they? Right up quick. Look for a quick play of the ball. Henry will kick. Outside is the call. Goes between winger and fullback. Connell back to clean it up. Brings it back. Sees plenty of purple jerseys there. A little bit of footwork. Tolavai and Tull leading the charge, and they take him back down to ground with some uh, help from Bobby Farrow. Fishiahi now the dummy half, goes centre field. Smart play by the Pythons, turning the pack around. Now having to grind it back out inside the 30, although they are good metres, he's offloaded. Brilliant, gets an offload away as well. Pulled the cameraman there. Lovely play from uh, Pisalili Tua, I think it was, that popped the offload, and he's lined up for another carry here, I think. Great work from the right winger for the Ellers, the Eagles. Here's Kingy, comes centre field. Strong. Brilliant carry, pops the offload as well. Kingy's on hand to clean it up. Directing traffic now at dummy half. They're going to move the ball to the left. Here's Bunce. Bunce will kick across the body. Fishiahi on the move. Pressure on oh. the back. It takes a bounce. Yeah. It's still loose here. Who's going to get there? I think the Eagles may have. Fishiahi's celebrating. He's trying to sell it. We're going to need to wait for confirmation here. Wall goes over to have the discussion, but I think this will be an Ellerslie try. No. Not Knock on. on the call. Well, impossible to tell from our footage. Can only imagine how hard that was to make the call on the field. Uh, but already we're seeing that pure pace of Glenn Fisher. He causing a little bit of trouble there. You can't afford to let the ball bounce with him around. Well, they don't hang around the pythons, so they've got a quick retap start. And they're trying to get into it. A wee bit of wrestling and niggle going on at the play the ball area. Another big settle out. Bobby Farrow, he's had a couple of nice touches already, the prop. Tolovai. Big Tui Vai Lopa. Straight through Tui Vai Lopa. Gets rid of Bunce. He's still going. Taken down 25 out from the line. They've got momentum now and numbers on the left. Toll goes to Henry. Henry to the line. Henry looks back on the inside. Henry just about goes through himself. 20 out from the line. Toll. The shuffle play on Tui Vai Lopa. Toll. Goes high, misses Connell, ball loose, he's going for a second. Mm. Josh Tufunga over for another, the ball allowed to bounce, and the Pythons double their lead, kick to come. Crown Lift Trucks action replay here, we can just, you know, trying to give you the best angles that we can in grassroots sports, and we can see that bomb's gone up. Over to the far side, he's tried to stretch it, missed it off the fingertips. However, he's managed to regather off the chest plate. Bang, how's that for a try? Mm, I'm loving it.
So, in a sign of just how strong that wind is, we've got another holder. Yeah, that's Jody having a rest. Is it? No. No, I'm not too sure who it is. Missed Cold it. day to get down on the grass, though. Great shot of the conversion, but the flags are waved down, so it remains Pukakoi 8, LSE Eagles 0. 19 minutes gone here at Karaka Sports Park. And the Pythons, all of a sudden, just starting to really get a hold in this arm wrestle. And it started with some brilliant carries from uh, both of the Tuivai Lopas. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and how strong is he? What a big unit. Got a wee bit of pace on him. Apologies to Jody there. There's no way he'd be lying down. As the Ellis Legals come back now, ready to kick off. And, um, you know, need to get back into the game and uh, complete a couple of sets. Put a bit of pressure on, build a bit of pressure. Here they go. So, scrappy ball which goes down low, trapped on the foot. The old vertical sidestep straight into the line. Love it. Slow play the ball. There's some big, strong lads on the paddock today, isn't there? Yeah, I like the makeup of this Pukakoi Ford pack, particularly with this man. Directing things oh, at the nice bottom, nice load. little offload. Come back through the middle of the park. They're now 30 out from their own line. As Tuivai Lopa makes his way back onside. 12 short of halfway now, Pukakoi. Toll. Center field. Tolavai holds it up beautifully. Just about put Henry through a gap. Henry fighting for that quick play of the ball, using every bit of experience there. To the skies they go. It's off the boot of Chris Finui and fielded nicely by Marcel Connell as well. Fishiahi now the dummy half. They need a good set here, the Ellis Eagles. They need to get down the other end of the park and get to a good kick. And some because of the Eagles still getting back on side too. Corey, sorry about that, mate. No, just going to say, yeah, you're right. The uh, Eagles are tracking back on side, but uh, this game is starting to sort of become played in this particular part here which isn't going to favour the Eagles obviously they've had to do a fair bit of defensive work in the last few minutes as Kingy looks to his left links with the 13 which is his captain yeah smart play by the pythons they keep turning the pack around don't they and just poking them back down into that corner fresh legs onto the park now for the LZ Eagles in the shape of Tianel Henry Kingy goes out the back this is Bunce, Bunce a high one a tester it's allowed to bounce. Cleaned up nicely that time by Kingy, who brings it straight back. But again, it's not a day to be letting the ball bounce if you can help it. It's hard to tell what it's going to do, really. And we saw in the reserve grade game a big bomb like that, which basically landed and just stuck next to the goal line. But a niggle on the play of the ball. Toll jumps out, works back through the middle. Good work from Ellerslie, though, to be alert to it and act quickly. Taken down on halfway now. Toll goes to his right. Here's a bumping carry Ford, and the Pythons oh, rolling through the middle of the park. There's a penalty. Tiffany yeah, no, Noble earns the penalty, so the Pythons will keep on charging here. Strip the call from referee Wall. So 22 gone. It's the Pythons in control right now. If they can score again here now, will be alarm bells going off at Eagles HQ. Farrow with the first carry. They set heavy to the left here at Pukakoi. Tolavai is the first receiver, and that's where it will go. Tolavai with the dummy in the run. Got that nice little swerve at the line, which is so handy in the middle forward. Again, a little bit of push and shove in the play of the ball. Here's Toll. Goes wide. I think that's Henry. Gets the offload away. And we've got to try in the corner. Pukakoi in for another one. The Pythons are on fire. There's the confirmation. A try in the far left corner. We'll do our best to identify that player if we can for you. But all that matters is the Pythons have 12 points on the board. Kick to come. Crown Lift Trucks Action Replay, and look at the replay, look at the footage, brought to you live by CTAS. Can't get any closer to the action than that, ladies and gentlemen, and that's four points on the line. It's Leroy Nahi that's got the try. A brilliant shot there, and you could just see the smile on Nahi's face as he inched closer to the line there. Knew he was going over.
So kick to come. Pukakoi leading by 12, 24 gone. Credit as well to Jody Henry. Had a nice carry in there. Just held the defence off long enough. Nahi finished it well. So Tolavai with a difficult one from out wide, and it is really gusting here at Karaka Sports Park. So it tends to come and burst. Tolavai strikes it, and, well, it caught the wind and was always going away to the right. But it is the Pythons who lead 12 points to nil. And Troy, they're looking super impressive. Ruben Tolavai heavily involved there, and Jody Henry really showing some class on the edge. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, from my point of view, or for mine, is, um, you know, we've seen three, four strategic kicks turning the pack around, going back up into that right-hand edge. And, you know, Ellerslie having to head back in there, get into the grind, get into the defence again. And when they actually get the ball, they're grinding it out from inside the 20. So real smart play at the moment. And um, I guess, you know, they've taken a couple of big scalps, have the pythons. So lots of pressure here in the first 25 minutes for Ellerslie, and they just need to get into the game. Here we go. Offside oh. from the kick. Well, wow. Oh, dear, oh dear. Just makes you want to go through a McDonald's drive through doesn't it? That's a cage killer, that one. Henry kicks for touch, puts that one safely into touch as well, over onto the backfield here. Yeah, hasn't missed, has he? So, they've visited both edges with success so far. Does that mean the next one's going to come through the middle? We will see in the next couple of seconds. Oh, bumping run. Namu with the first. They're 25 out from the line. They set heavy to the left now. Tolavai set up as the second receiver right now and said they'll work it through the middle via Farrow. He makes just short of 10 on the charge. Tolavai, change of direction at the line, but good first up contact from the Ellerslie Eagles. Henry set to the left. Toe will jump out, instead goes short and brings in the front rower, Tippany Noble. Right in front of the SAS uprights. Toe jumps out, crabbing, looking for options. They go back to the middle, but the Eagles get there in numbers. Right in front of the SAS uprights. Last play coming up now. Playmakers set either side for Jason Toll. Will go to his right. Fianui holds it up. The Eagles get there, and that'll be handover ball. Well, credit to the LZ Eagles. They've faced some adversity so far in this game, but great goal on defence Yeah, that time. absolutely. They repelled really well there, and um, that'll give them a wee bit of, uh, a wee bit of metal. As the ball is now changed over, and get ready to restart. No, re Ref saying, no, no, restart on that blade right there, that blade of grass. There we go. Good line speed. They might get him back in goal here. Wow. Short. Huge set now for the Eagles. That's a brilliant carry. And just as I say that, the ball comes loose. Now this on? should be play on. Well... The referees had called knock on. I thought that may have been play on for a moment there, and maybe the Franklin Storm are on a roll, but it was definitely called by referee Wall, so the scrum will pack down now, and they just can't buy a completed set really right now, the Ellers, the Eagles. Struggling coming out of their own end in that time, an unfortunate error after what had been a, a fairly good carry from Jordan Schonkel. Big set coming up. 28 gone. It's the hosts who lead 12-0. Henry to the line. He's tackled well by the 17. Pia Falau. Toll jumps out. Back Shot on the shot. inside. This is Tuivai Lopa. Two metres out from the line now, the Pythons. Hunting their fourth try. Look at the middle forwards winding up. They want the ball in the middle. That's exactly where it will go. No, Toll says we'll do a little pirouette and then go to Henry, and Henry then gets set upon and body slammed to the ground. Kingy. Fianui. Kingy now chimes in. Fashiahi calling numbers across in defence. Instead, they'll go down the right side and burrowing low. Jason Toll. Too easy. Another one for the Pythons. They are flying right now, and the Eagles just don't have an answer. So as we look at the 
action replay brought to you by Crown Lift Trucks. We're looking for a quick play the ball here, and they have probably had options both left and right. Dummy half read it pretty well. Just down low, good strong leg drive, and as you can see from that image there, the ball has crossed the line. That's four points, ladies and gentlemen. We touched on it before. They've visited both edges looking for tries, and in that time, probably the fact that they had scored on the edges just sort of had Ellerslie second-guessing, and Jason Toll says, I'll take that. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, I think, you know, they'd already repelled their first set on the line. You know, they're getting through a wee bit of work at the moment, are the Ellerslie Eagles. And uh, you can see the coach there on screen pointing. He's probably, you know, having a bit of strategy in regards to what he does next because, what are we, 29 minutes in, 16 points gone. And, um, and I think, as you've rightly said, Corey, you know, they need to be able to build some, some uh, momentum, some pressure, you know, and complete some sets. And at the moment, man on screen here, when they've completed their sets, have been getting away some fantastic kicks. So change of kicker, Tolavai taken off, and Henry given the chance to kick this one. Not sure if Ruben's been subbed. Yet to convert a try today. Henry strikes it. It's certainly got the length right. and is away. So the score will remain. Pukekohe 16, the LZ Eagles nil in this crucial Crown Lift Trucks Fox Championship match here at Karaka Sports Park. Now, mate, I'm doing this from memory. Were they on equal points on the ladder? Correct. Both yeah. on uh, five competition points. So the they're already Eagles. Up on aggregate, yeah? Yep. The Eagles okay. have a, a fairly handsome uh, advantage in terms of points differential percentage. Of course, uh, at this stage, that does not matter because uh, the P Pukekohe Pythons will go to seven and put themselves in a... One point split. Yeah, basically a situation where they can go through next week. Of course, there's plenty to go yet, so we won't start uh, signaling the end to anyone sees or anything like that as the Pythons get back to work. Jumping into dummy half now is Bobby Brown. Brown then hands off to Terekia Douglas. Eight and a half to play in the first half. All the Pythons so far. Halftime can't come soon enough for TJ Ashford and the Eagles, who want to get in, resets and look to go again. Bobby Brown jumps out, there's cries of Ford, and then there's a call of Ford. And we'll go back and uh, pack down for a scrum. All the Pia Falau at one stage there wanted to play on. So a rare error in the last uh, probably 10 minutes or so for the Pukekohe Pythons and gives the Eagles a chance to build a little bit of pressure here as we approach the final seven minutes or so of the first half. Yeah, it's been a wee bit of time since they've got up here into the opposition's half. So they want to really complete a, a good set of six. Good set. Good, uh, good set of six. Boy, that was a tongue twister, wasn't it? And uh, stop laughing, Corey. I'm already under pressure. And here they go. Safest we get back to the football. Tua. Really like this guy when he's carried. He's had a couple of good ones and earns a penalty that time as well. And Tua, he's picked up a bit of a knock here, Tua. May have got the neck twisted in there. That's certainly the message from referee Wall as we get time off. So... Uh, there may be a talking to here for Tolavai as well. It'll be nothing major. But probably a well-timed break for the LZ Eagles, who mm. uh, no doubt will be getting plenty of messages from the sideline. As you've looked at the game so far, where's it probably just falling short right now for uh, for Ellsley from your point of view? Uh, the need to complete a set of six, you know, and probably to back-to-back -back mount a bit of pressure. You know, uh, look and saying that. They did very, very well down on their uh, goal line when they were repelling you know, the Pythons attack, but um, Jody's been poking the ball over and turning their pack around to get them down into that right-hand corner. He's done it three or four times today. Um, you know, maybe that's what the strategy is for the rest of this half at least. Huge month coming up for the Auckland Rugby League, all of the uh, junior grand finals mixed in with the uh, premiership grand finals. And, of course, uh, this Friday we have the SAS College Rugby League grand final, Southern Cross Campus up against St. Paul's. Looking forward to that one. That'll be live on Sky Sport, or you can go to the game, just purchase a ticket, and you can watch the uh, Warriors afterwards as well. Don't let last night's performance put you off watching the Warriors. It'll be all good come Friday. Well, the College Rugby League one, will, they'll be going for me. <laughs> and that's brought to you by SAS Sporting Apparel. 
and a big thank you to SAS who sponsor the Fox Premiership as well. Back to it now. Here's a great chance for the Eagles. They've hardly been down here in this half so far. Kingy jumps out. Dummies goes back door. And there's someone got smashed in back play. Although it pops up for Fishiahi and Fishiahi then spills the ball. Knock on there. And just as it started to get going for it, the LZ Eagles. Ball comes loose. There's the up the yella sign in the background there. They need every bit of support they can get right now. It's a shame it broke down that time. Looked likely for a moment there. Well, I'm, t I'm told by the manager at the LZ Eagles Club that there was a special prize for a banner today. So that lady wins that. And um, I dare say the contact the manager down there and there's a, there's a Fanta in it for you. You're fast doing the LZ Eagles out of business with all these free giveaways, Troy. Anyway, bigger problems to address on the field for the time being as Pukakoi ruck the ball out now. Six minutes to play in this half. Terakia Douglas. That's a big human. Brown. Speaking of big humans, strong carry there from Tui Vai Lopa, I think it was. In fact, that may have been uh, Tiffany Noble. Hard to make out the jersey numbers with some of the mud that's on there right now. Penalty now. They crept up inside the 10. Now, this is where it's vital, you know, to have a good kicker. And... Um, you know, to be fair, this number six, he doesn't miss. So ball put into touch. Jason Toll off the field right now. Looks like Bobby Brown's assumed the dummy half duties. He was their best player through the... Opening 25 minutes or so, Jason Tolt capped off with that try. Center field, they come now. They link via Namu. 30 out from the line. Less than five to play here at Kraka Sports Park. Strong carry. Offload as well. The Pythons are rolling. Brown wants a penalty, not forthcoming, jumps out, finds Henry. Henry then hands to Kingy, and there's space on this edge. Oh. There's a whistle and back play. What's that going to be for? Crossing over behind the player. Yep. Obstruction. Obstruction, the call. A lot of energy coming out of the Python's defense line. They're all talking to one another, Corey. No one there's getting tired at this point. So let's have Ellerslie uh, here. Create some opportunities. Fresh legs on the park for the Eagles in the shape of Vili Lee. Mangari East Jr., long-time Ellerslie player. We've got a penalty yeah, here as down. well. So a chance for one last push in this half for the Ellerslie Eagles. They go in at 16-6. It's... A very different situation for them. We've got a fair way to travel yet. Bunce will kick for touch. That's difficult. He was had to take that from the right-hand oh, side hash mark, which meant he had to kick across three quarters of the park. Great to see Chance Bunce back uh, involved in local footy as well, of course, a former New Zealand Māori representative. Spent time with the Mackay Cutters and uh, a number of Australian clubs at Jersey flag level and, uh, and cup level. Chomko. Vili Lee. Lines one up. Vili Lee goes straight through. Urgent intervention required. They're not far out from the line now. About 19 short. Kingy will go left-hand side to Bunce. Bunce links with the wide back rower, and they're taken down 10 metres out from the line as Jacob Hales in possession. Bunce goes centre field, working it through the middle of the park. Pukakoi need to be disciplined on their line here. Kingy holds it up, Fishiahi, Fishiahi looping ball, 
Quick Ooh. hands, better down. He saved the try there yeah. out wide, but Ellerslie will get another go here. They need to pack the scrum quickly. Less than two to play by our count, and they want to get things moving here, the Eagles. Finally, the Eagles in a wee bit of rhythm there. So Connell with the feed. In fact, it's uh, Manga, my apologies, goes to Bunce, his half's partner. Nine out from the line now. This will be their last attacking chance of the half, you would think. Fishiahi jumps out, shakes out a one. Fishiahi still fighting, staying on the feet. Right up against the line now. Huge test here for Pukakoi. Bunce swings it out the back to Kingy. Henry. They lose yardage on that play. They're trying to get to the points of the field where they want to. Bunce, loopy ball over the top. Beautiful from Bunce. Put Skelton into a yawning gap out on the left. And the Aussie Eagles on the board and at a crucial time as well, right on the stroke of halftime. Yeah, fantastic for them. And uh, managed to get, you know, a couple of sets together. And as we see the crown lift action replay here, just shifting it out to the left-hand edge, picked the right lane to run down, went through one, touched, and the Eagles land. Four points. Yeah, they seem happy too, don't they? Ground lift truck section replay. As the sun comes out across the park. Been a tough first half for the Eagles, and I think to now go in at 16 to 4 or 16 to 6, I think they'll take some heart out of that because they'd hardly really been down that end of the park, had Correct. they? They maybe yeah. had four or yeah. five sets the whole game uh, yeah. down that end as the Hooter goes in the background. So Bunce a chance to make this a 10-point ball game and all of a sudden the outlook is a little brighter for the Aussie Eagles. He may need a, a holder here. That's how strong the wind is here at Karaka Sports. Yeah, hold my mic. I'll duck over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'll send Selwyn. No, he's going to have a crack. He'd probably get there faster than you, to be fair. Oh. Bunce strikes it. Good kick. Looks good. Flags are up. And the Eagles, a huge play right on half time. And they will go into the shed. Still 16 to 6 down after a dominant first half showing from the Pukakoi Pythons. You're joining us for the Crown Lift Trucks Fox Championship. A very short break for us before we resume with the second half action. Intermediate Rugby League kicks off this week, starting with the North West Waitakere Zone. There will be five zone tournaments played, including the Girls Interzone before Champion of Champions. To register your school, head to our website at aucklandleague.co.nz. Livestream action. Catch us live this Saturday as we watch Pukakoi versus Alizley in round six of the Crown of Trucks Fox Championship. Tune in live from 2.30pm at aucklandleague.co.nz. Now we're going to take a look at a wrap of the highlights from the weekend. Jared Tour playing a lot at the line today. Involved in the ball plane. 
Right edge they come now. Hakaraya to the line. Dyer, quick hands. Golton, look out. The try scoring machine will open things. Miski, the dummy half. Links with Inu. Inu crabs across field. Links with Hakaraya to Dyer. Here's the right edge again. David Dyer's over. Armager to Edwards. Edwards. Edwards holds it up. Puts the Sessi through. And the Papakota Seagulls on the board. Fully low though. Five out from the line. Last play now coming up for the Seagulls. BT is the dummy half. Jumps out. Finds Neil Levu with the athletic finish in the right hand corner. Stowers to BT. BT holds it up. Puts Nate in through. Quick hands. Neil Levu's in for his second. Alan Neil Levu. Right in the center of the field. Bond. Flat ball. To Hakaraya, Hakaraya just about goes through, pops up, beautiful offload to the middle. And on hand to collect it, Seamus Makiri. Edwards jumps out, links to Ropati, Ropati running hard in Equini Ropati. Finally they get their reward, Papakura. Stowers goes to the line, then goes back door to Edwards, Edwards to Tassesi, they got numbers on the left, they've got a try on the left. Christopher Smithson, Miski, center field, looking for a gap here. Jared Tua, Jared Tua! The captain crashes over, but he knows there's a bigger fish to fry here. Phoenix Hunt. Siren goes. Seagulls win, 28 points to 22. You know, credit to our team for hanging in there for the 80 minutes. We knew Papa Kura were gonna be an 80 minute team. You know, they're a team that's uh, been to the Fox, won the Fox. And been in the Fox for plenty for a long, long time. So, you know, all we're trying to do at the attitude is trying to trying to get that back into the Fox, man. We're playing, playing really, really hard to get to this point. And, you know, it was a real tough loss, our first one at home for the year. Um, but, you know, Papa Kura never gave up, so credit to their boys. Yeah, I think it was a good challenge for us. Um, you know, beginning of the season, we've been playing, um, as you know, in the Fox. Uh, unfortunately, we got sort of relegated down to the Fox Championship. Um, different ball game, you know, there's a lot of big, bigger bodies, big heavier bodies, not as quick moving, but um, definitely takes a toll after the after the 80 minutes. Um, yeah, like we knew it was going to be tough out here, we knew it was going to be a middles game. Um, the boys bought it, so did Tat. Uh, we sort of lost it there. 20 to 30 minutes, it gained it back in the first half. Um, that's full credit to our boys, uh, to their pack, and, and yeah, thank you. Welcome back, now we're going to take a look at the Premiership Ladders to the Crown of Trucks Box Championship. Papakura take the top spot, followed by Bay Roskill and Seattle 2 and Richmond sitting third and fourth. To the SES Fox Memorial Premiership Ladder, Howick still remain at the top, followed by North Coke and Mount Albert and Lenora take the third and fourth spot. That's all this week, I'm Savannah Tafalevi, thanks for joining us. So welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Ellerslie Eagles on, on your screen. Corey Rosser just back.